Hello everyone, this is my last lecture in this series of 60 lectures on main group chemistry. Today let me consolidate whatever I discussed in the last uh, 59 lectures. So before I start that one, uh, I am showing you some of these reference books I have used here, Advanced Linearian Chemistry 6th edition and also Organometric Chemistry A Concise Introduction uh, by Aishan Broish and also Inorganic Chemistry a third edition by D. F. Shriver and Atkins and Inorganic Chemistry uh, one can use second, third or fourth edition by C. E. Housecraft and A. G. Sharpie. Besides this I have also taken some information uh, from Wikipedia and other uh, internet sources and also some uh, uh, journals. Of course, wherever I have taken I have mentioned the articles uh, details. So, you can look into it. So, let me begin with uh, about covalent bonding and of course, the bonding concept is very, very important whether we consider main group chemistry or transformatory chemistry and uh, we should be able to distinguish between the type of bonds we come across in a molecule. Uh, for example, if you see FF covalent bond is there and covalent bond can be non-polar covalent bond or polar covalent bond. Non-polar covalent bonds are very stable. And if you want to do any reaction with such molecules, we have to first polarize and make it polar covalent bond, then only reaction happens. Uh, for example, when we come across nonpolar, when we come across polar can be clearly uh, known by looking into the two atoms uh, which are contributing electrons. For example, nonpolar covalent bond equal sharing of bonding pair will be there. That means if the electronegativity difference is marginal, then you have a non-polar covalent bond. If the electronegative difference is considerable, then we have polar covalent bond and of course, if the electronegative difference is too large, then that leads to the formation of ionic bond. And let us uh, look into uh, the MO diagram I have given here for BF3. Uh, sometime uh, we think that writing MO uh, diagram for polyatomic molecules is little complicated, it is not really. So, here uh, at least one of the central atom will be there and several other atoms will be binding to the central atom, these several at peripheral atoms. So, essentially uh, we consider the orbitals uh, from those as ligand group orbitals. For example, look into BF3 here, in case of BF3 we have a total of uh, uh, 24 electrons, 7 each from fluorine atoms. 7 into 3 21 and 3 electrons from boron S 2 P 1. So, now we have to accommodate these 24 electrons and first let us look into the Lewis dot structure. Of course, when we write uh, Lewis dot structure for B F 3, we simply write like this. And here, uh, uh, Octet is not satisfied for boron because it has only 6 electrons and, and of course, this is less uh, Lewis acidic compared to BCL3 because of uh, 2P2P interaction. So, these two electrons might come here so that it can give little bit of uh, uh, completion of the octet 2 electrons. And in case of uh, uh, this is Lewis dot structure, in case of uh, valence bond theory. Uh, what we do is boron undergoes sp2 hybridization okay uh, hence so this is tetrahedral is not possible so basically what happens it undergoes sp2 hybridization angle is 120 so this is what we say here of course here we do not talk about uh, uh, octet satisfaction, here it is electron deficient. So, then how to write MO diagram? MO diagram is shown here, you can see uh, that means essentially 12 ligand group uh, or 8 uh, that means here 3 fluorine atoms are giving 21 electrons and then 3 electrons are coming. So, totally we have 24 electrons, out of 24 electrons if you see here, uh, 6 electrons are essentially used for making uh, 3 boron to fluorine bonds and now this one whatever I have shown here, uh, this one is responsible for uh, making 
p pi p pi interaction to remove little bit of electron deficiency that means these two electrons are coming from fluorine atom and now with this one we have left with uh, uh, about uh, out of 24 8 are the 16 electrons are these 16 electrons essentially remain here as uh, uh, 8 pairs non bonding. So, that means still molecular orbital theory gives a complete picture and also it shows the possible uh, p pi p pi interaction between fluorine and boron to remove its electron deficiency and hence these 4 pairs can be considered as satisfying the octet of boron. So, that means basically a lot of information comes and better information comes from molecular orbital theory. Let us look into one more example here. SF6 molecule and SF6 molecules if you go to the valence bond theory we assume that sulfur undergoes sp3 d2 hybridization and it generates 6 hybrid orbital having 1 electron each and that combines with uh, 6 fluorine atoms to form an octahedral molecule uh, having 12 electrons surrounding it. But if you look into the MO diagram here. Uh, here uh, in the 3 d energy is very high compared to 3 p and 3 s as a result it is less likely that they will participate in bonding. This is actually a more diagram for uh, SF molecule here and they are not participating as a result what happens only 8 electrons are coming here and remaining uh, 4 electrons are essentially remain as non bonding and they stay on almost the fluorine orbitals or on fluorine atoms. So, that means this shows that SF6 is a hypervalent molecule and same analogy can also be extended to uh, disodium hexafluorosilicate Na to SIF6. So, that means there will be some difference in the understanding of the bonding uh, between Venus bond theory and uh, molecular orbital theory, but however molecular orbital theory gives a better picture of the structural aspects that are there in each and every molecule. And of course, uh, this is a polyatomic molecule as I said polyatomic molecule uh, can be understood in this fashion. A summary about structure and bonding is we began with Lewis model where we showed octet and also its limitation and also VSCPR theory it gives uh, steric numbers and also it predicts geometry as well as shape. Then valence bond theory with hybridization concept again uh, it uh, gives about uh, geometry as well as shape and molecular orbital theory gives bond distance, bond strength and also it gives some idea about the reactivity of those molecules and also magnetic properties. So, concept, conceptual steps used in bonding starting from molecular formula to the hybrid orbital you can get information from one or the other of these bonding concepts. However, for the understanding of the complete okay, physical and chemical properties one has to go for molecular orbital theory. Let us begin with group 1. Of course, group 1 we have only one electron in its valence shell and the oxygen state is plus 1. They do not show any other oxygen state other than plus 1. With water they readily form hydroxides which are strongly alkaline in nature hence name alkali metals. So, so that means all their oxides are uh, basic in nature they react with water to give the corresponding hydroxides. And of course, I also discussed the uses of uh, group 1 elements. Lithium is used in the manufacture of alloys and in certain glasses and ceramics. Lithium carbonate is used in the treatment of manic depressive disorders and sodium potassium alloy is used as a heat exchange coolant in nuclear reactors. A major use of sodium lead alloy was in the production of anti knock agent such as tetraethyl lead. It is no longer used, but the increasing demand for unleaded fuels renders its this of decreasing importance. The major consumption of sodium chloride in the manufacture of sodium hydroxide, chlorine and sodium carbonate. And a large fraction of sodium salt is used for winter road de-icing uh, in cold countries. Potassium hydroxide is used in soap manufacturing to make soft liquid soaps. Potassium chloride and sulphate are used as fertilizers. Uh, nitrate and chlorate of potassium are used in fireworks. Many organic synthesis involve lithium, sodium or magnesium uh, and their organometallic uh, derivatives. Market for rubidium cesium elements is small and highly specialized. Applications include glass for fiber optics in the telecommunication industry, night vision equipments and also photoelectric cells. Uh, these elements are used. And in case of alkaline earth metals, uh, 
having ns2 electronic configuration arc state is plus 2 and beryllium differs from other elements owing to its smaller size that is true in case of uh, almost all elements in the first row the chemistry of first row elements are slightly different because of the smaller uh, size and high charge to size ratio and uh, beryllium resembles aluminum we introduce their diagonal relationship and atomic and ionic radii are smaller than those of group 1 elements. And of course, uh, alkali metals have the largest uh, uh, size in their row and the least francium is the largest uh, atom known and the helium is the smallest in the periodic table out of 118 elements. Beryllium is used in the manufacture of body parts in high speed aircraft and missiles and also in communication satellites. Because of its low density, beryllium is a poor absorber of electromagnetic radiation and as a result it is used in the X-ray tube windows. Uh, its high melting and low cross section for neutron captures make beryllium useful in nuclear energy industry. The presence of magnesium in magnesium alloy imparts greater mechanical strength and resistance to corrosion and improve fabrication properties. As a result and also because of the lighter nature, magnesium aluminum alloys are used in aircraft and automobile body parts and lightweight tools. And both magnesium and calcium ions are catalysts for diphosphate, triphosphate transformation in biological system that is very, very important. Magnesium 2 plus is an essential constituent of chlorophyll in green plants. Important use of lime are in the steel industry, pulp and paper manufacturing and also in extraction of magnesium. So, calcium carbonate is in huge demand in steel, glass, cement and concrete manufacturing and also in solvay process and calcium fluoride occurs naturally as the mineral fluorospar and is commercially important as the raw material for the manufacture of HF and fluorine gas. Let us come to the group 30. Having NS2 NP1 electronic configuration, the group arc state is plus 3. However, uh, when you go down the group, the tendency to have a lower coordination comes into the picture because of inert pair effect. And inert pair effect begins in fact in, with group 13. Also, indium partly shows inert pair effect. Inert pair effect is more pronounced in case of thallium uh, as far as group 13 elements are concerned. And then it spreads across tin and uh, lead and also it moves on to group 15 elements such as antimony and bismuth and then tellurium and except for boron other elements uh, have low electronegativity value and are all metals. Uh, as I said plus 3 oxygen state dominates the chemistry of group 13 elements and plus 1 oxygen state is reasonably stable for thallium and in fact plus 3 is oxidizing in nature and sodium Borohydride and lithium aluminum hydride find application as very useful reducing agents in inorganic and organic synthesis and all boron trihalides are strong Lewis acids. The main use of boron is in borosilicate glass. Borax has many domestic uses for example as a water softener, cleaner and mild pesticide. Boric acid is used as a mild antiseptic as well. Elemental boron is used in the production of impact resistant steel and in control rods for nuclear reactors. Amorphous boron is used in pyrotechnics giving a cast green color when it burns. Aluminum is the most widely used non-ferrous metal. The technological uses of aluminum metal exploits its lightness, resistance to corrosion and in fact it is easily recyclable. It is also used in cans, foils, utensils, in construction and also in aircraft alloys. And gallium and indium phosphides, arsenides and antimonides have important applications in semiconductor industry. In fact, their semiconductor properties are much superior to the silicon uh, semiconductors. They are used as transistor materials and in high light emitting diodes laser dipoles, photo detectors and solar cells, integrated circuits, example in high performance computers. Thallium sulphate is, was used to kill ants and rats, but the extremely high toxicity level of thallium compounds are now well recognized and as a result they are not uh, used uh, as uh, um, poisons. Uh, important uses of thallium are in semiconducting materials in selenium rectifiers, in thallium activated sodium chloride and sodium iodide crystals, in gamma radiation detectors and also in IR radiation detection and transmission equipments.
So, group 14 with the NS2, NP2 electronic configuration are almost at the middle of the main group elements. Of course, carbon is well known for its organic chemistry and also catenation and silicon finds uses in semiconductors and diamond is the hardest known substance and apart from its commercial value as a gemstone, it has application in cutting tools and abrasives. Its thermal and electrical properties make graphite suitable as a refractory material and for uses in batteries and fuel cells. Carbon fibers having great tensile strength are used to strengthen materials such as plastics. Silicon has major application in the steel industry and in electronic and semiconductor industries. Silica is an extremely important commercial material. It is the main component of glass manufacturing and large quantities of sand are consumed worldwide by the building industry. Of course, uh, we have in India now the scarcity of uh, uh, silica that is a sand for construction. Carbon fibers having great tensile strength are used to strengthen materials such as plastics. The commercial demand for germanium is small and the most important applications are those in fiber, infrared, optics and arise from the optical properties of germanium oxide. Tin plating of steel can improve corrosion resistance and is a major use of tin. High quality window glass is usually manufactured by tin. Lead is a soft metal and has been widely used in the plumbing industry. This use has diminished as awareness of the toxicity of the metal has grown nowadays. That is the reason even now those who come for looking into these problems as called plumbers as earlier uh, plumb bum was used uh, in, in this uh, uh, water pipes and other things and also in plumbing. So, lead acid storage batteries are not only uh, in the automobile industry, but also as power sources for industrial uh, forklifts, mining vehicles and airport ground services and for independent electrical power sources and also in hospital. Uh, group 15 elements show plus 3 as well as plus 5 as a group oxygen states. Plus 3 state is most stable for bismuth due to inert pair effect and tendency to have plus 5 state decreases down the group again because of inert pair effect. Nitrogen shows minus 3 to uh, plus 5 oxygen state and uh, phosphorus shows both plus 3 and plus 5 oxygen states and plus 3 compounds are widely used as ligands in uh, uh, coordination chemistry and organometallic chemistry and also some of these phosphines find application in homogeneous catalysis. And of course, group 15 elements are also called as nictogens uh, and they have non-metal in nitrogen to main group metal bismuth. And nitrogen is essential for the industrial production of ammonia and nitric acid. The major non-chemical use of nitrogen gas is an inert atmosphere in metal processing, petroleum refining and food processing. Nitrogen gas is used to provide an inert atmosphere in the laboratory. Liquid nitrogen is a convenient refrigerant in both industry and in the laboratory. Uh, with boiling point minus 196 degree centigrade. The important application of phosphorus is in phosphate fertilizers. Phosphoric acid is industrially very important and is used on a large scale in the production of fertilizers, detergents and food additives. Uh, arsenic salts and arsenes are extremely toxic and uses of arsenic compounds in weed killers, sheep and cattle dips and poisons against vermin. Arsenic is a doping agent in semiconductors and gallium arsenide has widespread uses in solid state devices and in semiconductors and Sb2O3. Antimony trioxide is used in paints, adhesives and plastics and as a flame retardant as well. Major uses of bismuth are in alloys with tin and as a bismuth containing compounds such as BIOCL, BIOCL in cosmetic products like creams, hair dyes and tints. Group 16 has the NS2 NP4 electronic configuration. Of course, the group oxygen state is uh, minus 2 and also it can also go to up to plus 6 in case of sulfur. Oxygen it is only minus 2 and it shows plus 2 oxygen state only when it is combined with fluorine and oxygen is the second most electronegative element in the periodic table next to fluorine and lower oxygen states are stabilized in case of uh, heavier group 16 elements because of inert pair effect. 
The, the important use of oxygen is as a fuel for oxyacetylene and hydrogen flames as a supporter of respiration under special conditions and in steel manufacturing, sulfur mainly in the form of sulfuric acid. Uh, an important property of selenium is its ability to convert light into electricity and the element is used in photoelectric cells, photographic exposure meters and photocopiers. A major use of selenium also is in the glass industry. Tellurium is used as an additive uh, less than 0.1 percent to low carbon states in order to improve the uh, machine qualities of the metal. The catalytic applications are also important and other application uh, stem from its semiconducting properties. Ex, uh, example, cadmium tellurase has recently been incorporated into solar cells. Of course, when you go to group 17, uh, group oxidate is minus 1, they are the most electronegative elements in the periodic table. Polonium is the metal, it has the metallic property and it is the last one in the periodic table to show metallic properties. And PBI4 is a non-existent compound because it is a combination of highly reducing uh, iodine and highly oxidizing uh, uh, lead in its plus 4 state. Yeah, the important uses of group 17 elements includes uh, like uh, uh, the nuclear fuel industry that uses fluorine in the production of UF6 uranium hexafluoride for fuel enrichment process and this is now the major use of fluorine. Industrially, the most important fluorine containing compounds are HF, BF3, CAF2 and synthetic rhyolite. Chlorinated organic compounds including 1,2-dichloroethane and vinyl chloride for the polymer industry are hugely important. Dichlorine was uh, widely used as a bleach in the paper and pulp industry, but in non legislation have resulted its, uh, in the changes. The manufacture of bromine and iodine containing organic compounds is a primary application of these halogens. And of course, other uses include those of hydrated salts and silver bromide in the photographic industry because of digital photography now uh, this sil silver bromide is no longer used. Uh, noble gases uh, uh, also show some reactivity and we saw a lot of compounds of xenon and few compounds of krypton uh, with extensive chemistry. Uh, xenon is not really an inert and as I said argon is almost 30 times more abundant than carbon dioxide in atmosphere. Helium is used as an inert gas and as a light source in lasers and electric discharge lamps. Liquid helium is a very low temperature refrigerant. Being very light and non-flammable, helium is used to inflate the tires of large aircraft and in balloons including weather balloons. Liquid helium is an important coolant and is used in high field NMR spectrometers. Organ is also used in laboratory in at atmosphere. In boxes for handling air sensitive compounds and neon, krypton and xenon are used in electric discharge signs. So, with this uh, let me uh, come to the conclusion. Uh, this uh, learning process is very, very important and, uh, and one should have always uh, uh, heart for learning anything and especially chemistry uh, because uh, uh, we are all having one of the sophisticated uh, laboratories in us. Just look into our own body, uh, all kind of mechanical, uh, biological, uh, everything happens in our body. Uh, I, I do not think man can ever make something like this. Okay. So, being the proud owners of such a sophisticated uh, chemical laboratory within us, uh, is it not embarrassing if you do not know some chemistry? From that point of view, I think we should know some basic chemistry and it will enrich our knowledge and without chemistry I can tell you there is no life. If you take anything, a chemistry component is there. Okay. So, as a result learning chemistry helps us uh, in understanding many things in day to day life. Uh, so, be greedy for learning, be content with earning. And of course, uh, when you listen to a classroom lecture, uh, in the limited uh, uh, period of time, a teacher may not be able to give all the details pertinent to a particular topic and he can only give the abstract or little more than what you can think of, but it is not enough. On the other hand, you have to go to write textbooks and you have to uh, 
you enhance your knowledge and also make a note of it and then the learning process will uh, attain some completeness and then at the end you will be having some satisfaction. With this I conclude my lecture and I made an effort uh, to uh, teach main group chemistry uh, in a very simple manner uh, for which what I did was I simplified all vast and diversified chemistry of main group elements into just four categories. Uh, that means interaction of uh, main group elements with hydrogen to form hydrates and interaction of all main group elements with oxygen and the chalcogens to form oxides and sulphides selenides and tellurides and then interaction of all main group elements with uh, halogens to form the halides and the fourth category of compound includes organ metallic compounds that means interaction of main group elements with uh, organic moieties, is carbon fragments and carbides and also borides and nitrides. So, when we look into each of these component and when we study group wise and in two groups we come across that one. For example, if we take uh, sodium oxide uh, or calcium oxide, we study sodium oxide in group 1 and also when you go to group 15, group 16. In the same way when you go for calcium oxide, we understand from the point of calcium from the group 2 that is uh, alkaline earth metals and when you go to oxygen we understand the chemistry from the oxygen point of view. So, when we learn like this, this is just four class of compounds, just about understanding anything and everything will be very easy uh, and, and also all fundamental aspects you go for electronegativity, atomic size, ionic size, uh, electron attachment, enthalpy, electronegativity, all those things are very nicely imbibed periodic trends and periodic properties in the chemistry of main group elements. Once we thoroughly understand the chemistry of main group elements, understanding just about anything, no matter where this chemistry component comes, recognizing it and its role uh, can be understood very easily. From this point of view, I believe uh, learning main group chemistry is very, very important and it is a stepping stone to understand all other aspects of chemistry no matter where it appears. With this again, I repeat the quote uh, that I made be greedy for learning and be content with earning. And if you have any query, you can always write to me. I have given my email address. Uh, thank you very much.